My name is Beverly and I love to draw cats. I'm a professional artist and working from photographs, I've drawn cats from all over the world. I create portraits in colored pencil and then share the story of each cat and the art process here on video. <laughs> Today I'm drawing Ornette, a loyal companion to his human for 19 years as she pursued life, love, and career in multiple cities. His human, Heather, was raised by cat-loving parents. When she graduated college and moved into a house in Atlanta, she was eager to carry on that family tradition. Luckily, her roommate was supportive of the plan. It was the summer of 1991. Ornette was not quite a year old and living in a foster home. When Heather came to see the cats, the young Ornette stood out from the crowd because of how friendly and outgoing he was towards her. She adopted him, and for the next many years, Ornette endeared himself to all the people who came into their lives. He was quite cuddly and enjoyed being held like a baby. He also didn't mind at all when Heather held on to his bottle brush-like tail as they fell asleep. It was his human's taste for jazz that inspired the name Ornette. In his younger days, the cat was prone to sudden bursts of energy. At random moments, Ornette would leave the bedroom and launch himself down the long hall of their shotgun house by way of rebounding off the wall opposite the exit door, parkour style. His frenetic dashing about reminded Heather of the avant-garde improvisations of Ornette Coleman, the pioneering musician who in 1960 became the principal founder of a musical genre known as free jazz. When he was about three years old, Ornette and Heather developed an unusual routine. She sometimes took walks around their neighborhood, which was made of single-family dwellings in an urban area. He'd always been an indoor-outdoor cat because that's how Heather was raised to keep cats. So Ornette often observed Heather taking off down the street. One day on her walk, she noticed him following her. She knew cats usually have a territory that they roam, but was not sure how far Ornette's extended. He stayed pretty close so she decided to let him follow her, expecting that at some point he'd reach the extent of his territory and go back. Instead, he followed her for over an hour, visiting people's yards and not running from their exuberant kids, as if it was something they did all the time. This was the first of many walks after that, which continued until they moved to a new area where there was too much traffic in the streets to be safe. Over a period of 10 years, Heather made several long-distance moves to different cities in the U.S., often in a moving truck. Ornette rode in the cabin wearing a harness and leash. He hated it so much that in one of the first moves, he wounded Heather's friend who came along to drive as he valiantly kept Ornette from exiting the driver's window. In 2004, she flew with Ornette from Pittsburgh to their future home in Montreal on what Heather called the absolute most stressful day of her entire life flying with all of her worldly belongings to an international destination with a pet was a whole new level of challenging. Ornette was slightly above the size restriction to ride in the cabin, but Heather planned to hide the fact by putting him in a slightly smaller, soft-sided carrier so it would fit under the seat. Still, she was fraught with worry that they'd be stopped at the airport and turned away. She had no place to return to anymore if that happened. Shortly before leaving the house, she was able to secure a sedative for Annette that would be good for two flights. She dosed the cat and instructed her boyfriend not to let him out of the house at any cost. Fifteen minutes before the taxi arrived, the boyfriend accidentally let Ornette escape. The cat knew something was up and was on his way to hide under the outbuilding in the backyard. Fortunately, the sedative kicked in halfway between the house and the outbuilding. Ornette staggered drunkenly then sat down in the middle of the patio where he was easily secured. In the end, she was able to get him to the airport on time and made it safely to Montreal. By this time, Ornette was a senior citizen. In the colder climate of Montreal, he acclimated to life as a pampered indoor cat who only occasionally visited the backyard. In the year before Ornette passed in 2010, Heather went back to Pittsburgh in a moving truck. For this trip, Ornette rode serenely on the dashboard, watching the fields and trees pass by. It is thought that cats do retain memories. If that is true, perhaps Ornette looked back fondly on the lovely neighborhood strolls 
the many relationships and the many households in which he was at Heather's side, confident that he had accomplished his mission. Here's the finished portrait. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. To find out how to get a portrait for your cat, visit my website, ilovetodrawcats.com.